Hi, welcome to my review and just general look at the Thunderhawk transporter kit from Forge World. Um, now obviously I know this isn't a Titan, but it is still a large kit from Forge World. It comes with one of their numbered certificates of authenticity, so I thought it might be of interest. Also I believe this is a fairly rare kit, so I thought people might just be interested to kind of see what makes it up and get a better look at it, as probably fairly unlikely to see one in the flesh. So to start with, here are the instructions. Um, now this is just the older style of Forge World instructions where you just get a couple of photocopied sheets with some pictures of the model in various stages of assembly. Not the sort of nice full colour step by step instructions you get these days. So these can be a little hard to follow trying to work out exactly where everything goes. So just looking at this first page, see so you've just got the uh, cockpit interior there a couple of pilots the main nose cone bit the cockpit fits into um, the, the main fuselage there on the front with the cockpit on the front um, and the cockpit interior in there the underside of the main fuselage with a number of pieces of detail stuck in there um, so that's not interior detail that is all visible on the outside of the model when it's assembled you can see that again there and also some of the grapple arms and clamps that will hold the vehicle in place um, so here you can see the underside of the model uh, got the sockets there for some heavy bolted turrets the turrets are there um, again quite a lot of detail on the underside got the undercarriage there which you can build either uh, retracted or extended um, you can't switch between them um, at least not in any easy way it might be possible to do something with some magnets so you could switch between them but I don't think you could have actual moving up under carriage without doing um, some pretty substantial scratch building on that but it might be possible to have it so you could have it in the two configurations but it's certainly not designed like that um, final sheet here you can see the finished model um, you can see obviously it's got these two front wings with the extra engines which is one of the big differences between the appearance of this Thunderhawk and the standard Thunderhawk gunship and obviously it's missing the large cannon from the top um, and also you can see there with a land raider being carried underneath it um, this was available either with a land raider or two rhinos for it to carry uh, those are just the standard plastic GW models uh, there's no modifications to them to go with this model and no no resin extras with those so moving on so this is the uh, sort of certificate of authenticity that you get with the larger Forge World models certainly with all their Titans and I think any of their kits once they're up into a, a few hundred pounds um, these are all generally numbered you see this one is uh, number 173 um, and I bought this I think fairly late in the life of this kit um, and for comparison the Warbringer Titan which I bought on release day uh, was numbered 225 um, now I know they don't probably send these out in strict numerical order but I think it still gives some idea of maybe quite how rare this kit is I doubt there's more than a, maybe a couple of hundred of them out there um, which seems quite low I think you know even the big kits like the Warlord Titan are into the thousands I don't know about the Tau Manta I imagine there's quite a few of those out there but I don't know for sure okay just starting with the least interesting thing this is uh, the Land Raider that was supplied with the Thunderhawk so as I mentioned this is just the standard GW kit in the normal packaging and uh, so there's nothing unusual at all about this one moving on to the Thunderhawk itself this is the largest piece of the model so this is the main fuselage this is just one big chunk of resin so you've got a good sturdy center for the model um, so this is quite nicely detailed obviously there's lots of flat areas just to match the sort of space marine design um, but plenty of areas a little detail 
that obviously are all again modelled after the, the standard look of the Space Marine vehicles. So it fits in nicely from that point of view. Um, I'm just going to see some more detail on the side there. Quite a nicely cast piece. Um, it's a little bit of mould line across there that we need dealing with, but other than that, it's not bad. And then there's a lot of this detail here on the underside. Um, now this is an interior detail when the model's complete. Uh, this is actually visible it's from the outside. So uh, yeah, that's this is the main sort of cargo area that the uh, tank that it carries hangs underneath here. Uh, this is the next largest section. This is the kind of rear part of the fuselage. Um, as you can see here, that's where the landing gear will fit in there. Um, it's actually upside down on the model, it'll be sort of this way up, obviously. And that just fits into the back of the fuselage like that. Um, obviously, you can see there's some fairly substantial gaps there, but I haven't done any sort of work to bend this into shape or do any filling. So obviously, there's a bit of work to do with that. Um, obviously it will also need uh, probably some fairly significant pinning on a model of this size otherwise I imagine the wings could start to droop or drop off so a fairly substantial project to build probably not on the same scale as the Titan but still going to be quite a lot of work next up we've got the wings of the Thunderhawk uh, so this is one of the main wings at the rear um, see obviously quite a lot of nice detail on the engine there um, and on the underside again quite a lot of detail um, you can see there that's the socket for the heavy bolter turret um, there's no built-in method of leaving that so it can rotate um, but you could probably put a, a magnet in there fairly easily if you wanted to um, so obviously a pair of those wings for the rear there's also wings at the front, which is one of the main differences in appearance between this Thunderhawk and the standard Thunderhawk gunship. It's got an extra pair of wings uh, with another set of engines to give it that extra lifting power. And obviously another one of those. These wings are, I think, identical, just mirror images of each other. And speaking of the engines, they also have these parts. That's the sort of air intake and the jet on the rear. Um, so you get four each of these parts that fit onto these engines. Um, so you just have the exhaust there and the, the air intake on the front. So they just add, again, a lot more extra detail to those engines. Um, I think those will look really nice when they're, they're painted up in metallic, something that contrasts with the main body of the, uh, the Thunderhawk. Um, and yeah, these are identical for all four of the engines on the model. Um, oh, and also, again, these smaller wings also have the uh, heavy bolted turrets in there. So it does have a little bit of armament, this. Just the, the four twin-linked heavy bolted turrets. So nothing like the kind of firepower you'd get on most models of this size. But obviously that's not its role. I suspect that might be one of the reasons why it hadn't sold as that well compared to some of the other Forge World kits is I think people tend to go for firepower though this is a nice characterful model and one that's sort of you know existed in the background it's maybe not one that many people would want to bring to the tabletop very often so here we just have the four heavy bolted turrets for underneath the wings uh, these are all identical um, so, so you just have the two halves the heavy bolter fit together something like that and then fit into the into the socket like that again I think it would probably be fairly easy to leave these so they can move if you wish um, but there's no no mechanism exactly built in for for that um, so yeah that's that's the full armament of the of the model that's that's it that's all your guns so now moving on to the nose cone of the model this here is the main nose cone section. Um, see, similar in style to the standard Thunderhawk model, though without the assault ramp that I think the normal one has on the front there. 
couple of doors on the side, which are just the standard Land Raider door size, so you can fit the chapter specific doors in there if you wish. Then got this detailed cockpit interior. See quite a lot going on there. Some gaps there, there's some ladders that lead down to the lower section, and this will just fit into the cock into the main nose cone a bit like that. Um, and then there's a canopy that goes over it roughly like that. Obviously currently this has got some shim pieces in the windows but those will have to be cut out and then either left blank or you could put some pieces of perspex in there to simulate glass. Also got the bottom section of the nose cone just fits on like that and you can see again reasonable amount of detail there. There's a door there that leads sort of outside into the main cargo area. There's another panel that fits on there so the doors get sandwiched between that so they can actually slide open and closed once the model's completed. And then there's just a final last piece of detail for the interior of the, uh, the nose cone. So obviously there's not much interior to this but what there is is uh, very nicely detailed. Look Should look pretty good when it's all painted up. So from the front of the Thunderhawk to the rear, so just got a few pieces there, it's just the rear of the body end goes on to the end of the fuselage, um, then tail plane which I believe fits on something like that, um, and final piece goes on top like that. So got a fair yeah, tell it does have separate sort of rudder and uh, ailerons on it that are separate pieces so you could model them uh, at a slightly different position if you wanted I think the style of this again the shape is slightly different to the normal Thunderhawk just to add a bit more variety between the two um, and we've got here now the uh, undercarriage so the rear undercarriage here a little sort of uh, spotlight on Got two of those that are basically the same just mirror images um, and then some piston pieces to support them so as I mentioned there's no no opportunity to really do any kind of um, articulation on these they just have to be uh, glued in place or you can, can glue the feet directly onto the body to have the doors or the undercarriage doors closed uh, front undercarriage very similar uh, just has this little sort of more like a targeting type system on the front rather than the spotlight and slightly shorter leg um, a little bit of underside detail on those but nothing particularly interesting so that's the undercarriage and here we have the crew so you get two space marine crewmen I think are almost identical the heads are maybe in slightly different positions um, I know there are some the chest plates are different and one has a pistol the other doesn't so they are slightly different um, and they come with a pair of arms attached to the uh, control sticks of the Thunderhawk you also get control sticks uh, separate without the arms so you can build the Thunderhawk without any pilots in it if you prefer so I mean, these are your standard space marine models uh, quite nicely detailed uh, so here we have a few of the parts from uh, within the cargo area um, so this is a large panel piece that just goes at the back of the the cargo area um, there's a little bit of extra detail here that glues inside the main fuselage just to give a bit more detail to that um, this is the winch system that is within that area uh, it doesn't move at all but this is what would be used for collecting vehicles after the battle got a couple of doors there these go uh, in the sort of back of the nose cone uh, in the doorway that leads out into the cargo area and here we have the various support arms 
for holding the vehicles. So you've got these six identical arms here that go on the side of the fuselage and swing down to grab the vehicle. As I said, there's no built-in uh, way of moving these. It might be possible to, to do some work with some pinning, but I think it would probably be fairly difficult. There's probably enough flexibility in them that you could just use the magnets to be able to remove the vehicle. These little clamp plates uh, that clamp onto the side of the, the vehicle that it's carrying. You've also got these two final uh, support arms and these fit onto this panel here. So I think the idea is that they can slide up and down like that. So yeah, it's quite a lot of detail there hanging down underneath. It took me a while to work out what all these bits were for. As I said, the instructions on these older models are not very clear, so it did take a while. Okay, so these are just the final bits that are left over. So here we've got various flaps and ailerons that attach into the wings. Rudder here, two doors there, which as I mentioned are the same size as the standard Land Raider doors. Um, these are some small uh, support type wing sections. These fit from the fuselage onto the main rear wings. This is the other side of the doorway that comes out of the nose cone into the cargo area. So it's between uh, this this part attaches onto the, the back of the nose cone uh, and it leaves a gap for the two doors to fit in between there so they can slide open and closed when the model's complete. A few ladder details there, these go inside the nose cone. A few panels, some extra details for the cockpit and the alternative uh, flight controls without the space marine arms. Um, got a couple of air brakes that fit on the back of the fuselage. Um, and then just one nice thing that you've got in some of the older large Forge World kits, which they don't seem to do anymore, is it just comes with a couple of these Imperial Eagles and this little set of purity seals that you can attach onto the models if you wish. Um, it's a shame they don't do that on these, these bigger models anymore. It's just nice to have these little details just to personalise them a bit. Um, but there you go. So that's the end of uh, all the bits. So that was the Thunderhawk Transporter. As you can see, um, it's a large model, quite a number of pieces, um, and quite a lot of the pieces are big, chunky blocks of resin. Uh, it builds into a surprisingly large model. Um, I'll hopefully have a size comparison up that you can see now, uh, which compares the fuselage to a Warlord Titan. And you'll be able to see that the fuselage there reaches pretty much to the top of the Warlord Titan, um, apart from the guns. So it's probably about 20 inches long in total. Um, and wingspan is uh, definitely over a foot. So the, the overall footprint of it is pretty large. I think it's a similar size to the standard Thunderhawk, but obviously with the extra wings on the front gives it that extra bit of bulk. Overall, the model shares a lot of the traits um, with the other in various Imperial flyers. I think somebody summed up best as uh, all the aerodynamic grace of Salisbury Cathedral, which I think says it quite well. Um, it's definitely the brute force and ignorance approach to flight that they use in the Imperium. I'm not quite sure what keeps Imperial aircraft in the sky. I can only assume it's on shakeable faith in the God Emperor of Mankind, because really those wings aren't going to help. Overall, I very much like the look of the model. Uh, very much got a bit of a Thunderbirds feel, I find. Just reminds me of Thunderbird 2, carrying the other vehicles around. Obviously on the battlefield, maybe not so useful. With just the four twinglint heavy bolters, it's not particularly well armed. Reasonably survivable, it's got heavy armour. But it's certainly not any kind of attack vehicle. It's just designed for delivering tanks to the battlefield. So I think it makes a nice uh, colourful addition to the to the game, particularly if you were using it in a, a scenario of some sort where it would make a, an objective or something like that. But it's not something you tend to bring every day to a battle. 
it's more of a collector's piece that's a nice nice project and something a bit different as mentioned i believe this is a fairly rare kit i don't think it's sold particularly well i think as i said because it's not really an attack craft so i suspect we won't see forge world do a new version of it like they have with the standard thunderhawk it's no longer for sale so i imagine it may now be gone for good which is a bit of a shame but i know these things do disappear over time of course we may well see a version for aeronautica imperialis in the future obviously that will be at the epic scale the eight millimeter i think it is scale the same as adeptus titanicus so that would be uh, interesting again i think it's maybe a better fit for that game so it'd be nice to see it make a return particularly if it came with an epic scale land raider hanging underneath it as that might be a nice hint for the future but we'll have to wait and see what happens there so anyway thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed this look at a fairly unusual model um if you have any questions please leave them in the comments thanks